Hello friends and fellow developers. Thanks for joining me on today's webinar for Senior JS Dev. For today's topic, I wanted to take a little bit of a step back and look at the broader picture of how we develop software. I recently purchased a Chromebook. I think that they're awesome for the price point and amount of compute power that they offer. But I had a question in my mind. Can I actually do software development on a Chromebook? And so I started looking into what's called the no local host movement. So I started with this article written by a developer named Swix. Yeah, Swix. And he makes a strong argument that no local host development is the inevitable evolution of software development. That is to say that we no longer in the future, we will no longer need to set up our local host environment, set up our laptops, set up our code IDEs, set up all of our dependencies, our languages, installs, our libraries, all of that will all be hosted in the cloud. And we can just go online, open up a browser, and start editing code and developing it and deploying it. He makes a strong case for it. In fact, there are several companies that are already transitioning onto the cloud for development, such as Shopify here, Slack here, GitHub, and many others. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to show you guys what I've learned as I've dipped my toe into this no local host software development paradigm, and maybe it'll inspire you to try something similar. So let's jump in. So my journey begins here with VS Code.dev. This was announced about a year ago. It's a website that anyone can go to and just open up a copy of VS Code running in a browser instead of on your local machine. That's pretty cool. You can see it looks just like a desktop version of VS Code. There's the search, the global project search. There's source control, debugging, extensions, and others, including live share, which means if I've opened up a project, I can actually share a link with a coworker and they can work on the same project with me at the same time. I can see their cursor, they can see my cursor, they can edit, I can edit. That's pretty cool to collaborate like that, all in a web browser. So in order to make this useful, obviously we have to load up some code and there's a couple ways to do that. Thanks to the file API in Chrome, I can open up a folder by clicking on this button here and it'll ask me to open up a folder on my local machine and then I can edit that code. Basically what I've done here is save the installation process for VS Code, but working on a local code base. However, to go no local host, we want to try something a little bit more dynamic and in the cloud. So let's take this example of a project that I have hosted in GitHub. It's really easy for me to connect my VS Code.dev IDE to edit that project. All I do is I click on this Open Remote Repository button here, and it will give me a list of options for repos to open. Now I will mention here, the first time you open VS Code.dev, it will ask you to authenticate. So I've already gone ahead and authenticated with my GitHub user, so it knows who I am. So I'm going to click on here to open a repository from GitHub. And here it's showing me a list of all the projects I have available. So I'm going to clone the first one here. I love code flow. This was actually an open source project that I've forked from another repository. And we can see here the URL has changed and the app is reloading inside of the browser. This will take a minute. And now if I click on the file explorer, you'll see that I have all the files here available to edit, develop, and commit. So let's go ahead and do a very simple commit just to show the process. Nothing very consequential in this demo, of course. I'm going to start by creating a new branch just as I normally would on my local machine. 
you can specify a new branch name here. This will be our senior JS dev demo one. And I'll click on switch to branch. Again, you'll notice that the URL has changed and I'm now in my branch and the IDE is reloading. Now I'm on my branch and I can make any changes I want to the branch. Let's do something simple in the readme. I'll just say, this is my demo. Now we'll go ahead and switch to the source control tab for VS Code. And here we can see the commit that I want to make. So I'll just add that change to this commit make a simple commit message. Hmm. Readme change. I can close this tab now. Now if I switch to my GitHub repo project, you'll notice GitHub has told me that less than a minute ago, I created a new branch. I could click on this button and create a new pull request, or I can do that in the IDE. If I click on the GitHub tab in VS Code, you'll see here some information about previous and current pull requests, but I'd like to click on this button here to create a new pull request. And I'll just expand this a little bit. You'll see I want to merge changes from my repos branch not into the upstream uh, re repository, but to my remote repository and the main. I can give it a title. I can say this is a demo for live webinar. I can choose to create a draft pull request. I'm not going to do that and hit create. There we go. Now VS Code even takes me to an internal pull request form that I can either merge or make comments or close the pull request. I can also see these changes updated live here when I click on pull request. Ta-da! This is the pull request we just made in VS Code. That's pretty cool. I can see my files changed. Yep, this is what I was expecting. Let's go back over to VS Code and we'll complete this pull request. I'll leave a comment. This looks fantastic. Great. Leave a comment. Let's see that on our GitHub repo web page. This looks fantastic. Great. So that syncing is happening. And finally, I want to merge this pull request. Create merge commit is the button I want to click. And the pull request is successfully merged. I'll go ahead and delete the branch as well. And VS Code.dev automatically switches me back to the main branch, since my other branch was deleted. And GitHub.com shows me that this pull request was in fact merged completely. Let's go to the History tab. I can see here is my closed PR. Success! Now another thing you may or may not know is that GitHub already has sort of a 
no local host flow implemented in their web UI with a shortcut. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to go back to this repository, ilovecodeflow.com. And I'm just going to hit one key on the keyboard, which is the period button. Now github.dev takes over. This is sort of like their branded VS Code development environment. They're doing similar things to what we just saw, where VS Code is going to open up that GitHub repository and give me an IDE so that I can play with it. Just like this. I could create a branch, work on it, commit it, open a PR, and merge that PR. Same workflow. Now I'm just going to go back to my GitHub repository and open up the VS Code.dev editor again. Now one thing that you'll notice with VS Code.dev is that there is no terminal available. Let me show you that. If I click down here on the footer bar and open up the terminal tab, you'll notice VS Code.dev tells me that terminals are not available in the web editor. Now there are some workarounds to this. One of them includes using GitHub code spaces. Here, this involves running VS Code on the server and opening up a portal through your web browser. It's all explained on their marketing page. Here's a pricing table to show you the compute power that you can pay for in order to use VS Code remotely. It's a pretty cool option. But is there a way to get a terminal in the browser itself? Well, not really until recently, thanks to StackBlitz and their CodeFlow project. Let me show you how that works. An easy way to jump into StackBlitz CodeFlow is by using their domain, pr.new. And to do it, all I do is I find a GitHub repository that I want to work on. And on the front of the URL, I add pr.new slash. What pr.new will do is automatically parse that URL and open up a stackblitz.com project for me using that repo as the start of the source code that I want to edit in my browser IDE. Here it is loading up. And you'll notice this is my code. I have the same readme file. This is the change that I recently made. And I'm on the main branch. As you can see here. And if I click there, I can create a new branch and follow my development flow just like I did before on VS Code.dev. But there's one big difference I'm sure that you noticed, and that is we have a working terminal. This is using a technology developed by StackBlitz called Web Containers. And what they are literally doing is downloading a mini operating system into your browser so that you can have a terminal-like experience. So this is running my npm dev, my npm start script, and running it as if it were in an operating system, but all in my browser. It's amazing. I'm going to go ahead and open up a tab to see my project running. So I'll click on this open preview. And this will open up a new tab in my VS Code editor. Notice this URL. It's the name of my GitHub repo at port 3000 running on local.webcontainer.io. And here it is, it's running. It's amazing. Let's make a quick update to see the code change live. I'm just going to add a new React component for demo purposes. My GitHub username is seniorjsdev. And I'll go ahead and triple the uh, existing message. Hit save. 
And now I should be the second the second name in this list of people who love code flow. So that worked. Now I could go ahead and do the same development workflow where I commit my changes, give it a message, open a pull request, and merge that pull request. Code flow opens up a world of opportunities for no localhost development. So I'm very excited about the future of no localhost development and still manage to develop quality software using best practices and a great development workflow. Well, I hope you found this webinar useful and exciting. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to my channel for more great content like this. I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank <laughs> you.